Is there room for God in assembly theory? Who's God? I like arguments for a necessary being better than God. <laughs> well, I think What's I said it earlier. Being? What's a necessary Like something that has to exist. Oh, so you like, I mean, you like the shortest path. Like, does God need... <laughs> no, no, I, I, I mean, I, well, you can go back to like Thomas Aquinas and arguments for um, the existence of God. But I think, I think most of the interesting theological arguments are always about whether something has to exist or there was a first thing that had to exist. But I think there's a lot of logical loopholes in those kind of arguments. Well, so God here meaning the machine that creates, that generates the stuff. But good God, so what I was trying to say earlier <laughs> Isn't is Isn't that, that just the universe? Though? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, but I there's a difference between, I, I sort of imagine like a black box, like a machine. Yeah. That's then I would be more comfortable calling that God because it's a machine. You go into a room and there's a thing with a button. Yeah, I don't and, like the great programmer in the sky version. Can I, yeah, yeah, but if it's more kind of a, um, like I don't like to think of if you look at a cellular automata, if, it, if it's the cells and the rules, that doesn't feel like God that generates a bunch of stuff. But if there's a machine like a, uh, that does that runs the cellular automata and set the rules, then that feels like God. Mm. That the other sort of, in terms of terminology. So I wonder if there's like a machine that's required to generate this universe. That's very sort of important for running this in the lab. So as I said earlier, I think I said this earlier that I can't remember the phrase, but something like, I mean, does God exist in our universe? Yes. Where does God exist? God at least exists in the abstraction in my in our minds, right. particularly of people who have who have religious faith they believe in. But let's then take your. But you're talking a little bit more about generic. Say, well, is there a mechanism beyond the universe you're calling God? I would say God did not exist at the beginning, but he or she does now. Because <laughs> I'm saying the mechanism. Well, you don't know if he didn't exist in the beginning. So like uh, this could be us in our minds trying to like just what listening to gravitational waves, detecting gravitational waves. It's the same thing. It's us trying to uh, go back further and further into our memories to try to understand the machines that make up that make up us. And so it's possible that we're trying to um, grasp at possible kind of what kind of machines could create. Uh, there's o there's always a tweet. There's <laughs> always a tweet. Uh, if the universe is a computer, then God must have built it because computers need creators. There you go. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, Yosha Bach replied, since there's something rather than nothing, perhaps existence is the default. Hmm. If existence is the default, then many computers exist. Creator gods are necessary computers, and necessarily computers too. I'm very confused by that, but that's an interesting idea that existence is a default versus non-existence. I agree with that, but the and rest then is. Not Lee responds, right. perhaps this reasoning is incomplete. That's that's how scientists talk trash each other on Twitter, apparently. Uh, which part don't you agree with? Um, when he said, if existence is default, then many computers exist. This comes back to the inventor and discovery argument. Um, I would say the universe at the beginning wasn't capable of computation because there wasn't enough technology, enough states. So what you're saying is the me if God is a mechanism, did so I might actually agree, but then the thing is lots of people see, more, see God is more than a mechanism. For me, God could be the causal graph in assembly theory that creates all the stuff and the memories we know. And the fact that we can even relate to each other is because we have the same, we share that heritage and wh why we love each other or we like to see God in each other is, it's just, we, can, we, we know we have a shared existence. So the, if the God is the mechanism that created this whole thing, I think a lot of people see God, you know, in a religious sense, as a as the, that mechanism also being able to communicate with the objects it, it creates. And if it's just the mechanism, it won't be able to create with the object, uh, communicate with the objects it creates. It can only create. It can't like interact mm -hmm. with the. Uh, well, there's versions of God that create the universe and then left. You know. <laughs> yeah. Like spark for some for some the, religions, but um, the first spark, yeah, yeah. But I I think I liked your analogy of the machine and the rules, right? But 
um, I think part of the problem is you, I mean, we have this conception that we can disentangle the rules from the physical substrate, right? And that's the whole thing about like software and hardware being separate or the way Newton wrote his laws that there was some, you know, like they exist outside the universe. They're not actually a feature of the universe. They don't have to merge out of the universe itself. Um, so I think if you if you merged your two views, then it gets back to the God is the universe. And then I think the the deeper question is, why does it seem like there's meaning and purpose? And mm. if I think about the features of the universe that give it the most meaning and purpose, those are the the what we would call the living components of the universe. So if you wanted to say God is a physically real thing, which you were saying is like an emergent property of our minds, but I would just say you know, the way the universe creates meaning and purpose, there is really a physics there. It's not like a illusory thing. And that is just what, what the physics of life is. Um, so is it, is it possible that we've forgotten much of the mechanisms that created the universe? Mm -hmm. So yes. like, is, so basically, you know, whatever, if God is that mechanism, we just leave parts of that behind. Well, the, but the universe is constantly generating itself. So if God is that mechanism, it would be that, that would still be active today. I don't believe, right. like right. I'm agnostic, but if I, if I, if I recall, would call the things I believe in God in the way that some people talk about God, I would say that God is, you know, like in the like universe There's now, a, it's not an absent thing. Um, um, are you, I'm, so I, I think there's a mislabeling here because you're, I mean, for I mean, I'm a uh, professional idiot, um, actually. But but uh, um, you um, should put that on your all. CV. Yeah. Prof yeah, yeah, yeah. Professionally, <laughs> but, so, not so, recreationally or amateur, but professionally. But I think for it. I would say if you were talking about God, I mean, again, I'm way out, way out of my depth here, and I almost feel uncomfortable. Oh. Yeah, but I feel quite uncomfortable articulating. But I'll try. For me, a lot of people that think of God as a consciousness, a reasoning entity that actually yeah. has causal power and your human like intelligence and yeah and your and so you're it's like then you're saying like gravity could be god or time could be god i mean i think for me for my conception of time is probably as fundamental as god because it gave rise to human intelligence and consciousness in which we can have this abstract notion of god um so i i, I think that you, you're maybe talking about god in a very mechanistic kind of unsophisticated sense Whereas other people say that God is more sophisticated and got all this, you know, feelings and love and, uh, you know, and this abstracting ability. So is that what, or do you mean that? Do you mean God as in this conscious entity that decided to flick the universe into existence? Well, w one of the features that God would have is the ability to f flick the universe into existence. I, you know, like Windows 95. I don't know if God is Windows 95 or Windows XP or Windows 10. I don't know the full feature set. Okay. So you, at the very least, you have to flick the universe into existence. And then other features might include ability to interact with that universe in interesting ways. Okay. And then how do you interact with the universe in interesting ways? You have to be able to speak the language of its different components. So in order to interact with humans, you have to um, know how to act human-like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so right. so I don't I don't know, um, mm. but it seems like whatever mechanism created the universe might want to also generate local pockets of mechanisms that can interact with that. Like could make a inj joke. Inject. <laughs> Like God was lonely. Yeah, it was lonely. I mean, it could be just a teenager and another just playing a video <laughs> yeah, game. Yeah, maybe. Well, I was going to say, I mean, I, I don't. So this is referring to our origin of life engine. It's like I, I don't believe in God, but that doesn't mean I don't want to be one. <laughs> right. 